So my argument has been for a long time that the Israeli public, which is basically a militarized society, like almost everybody is in the military except for the Orthodox Jews, right? They are being fed Israeli propaganda from kindergarten. Yeah. So I completely understand. I mean, this goes, this goes, I mean, the sophistication of this manipulation is, is staggering. Yeah. It permits everything. So yes, I completely, I do understand, not justify. I do understand why we have young kids, 18, 19, 20, going into Gaza, thinking they have to, they have to kill them all. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Neutrality Studies. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to another YouTuber again, the host uh, of the Salt Cube Analytics podcast, Thomas Karat. Thomas holds a master's degree of science, communication, behavior, and credibility analysis from the Manchester Metropolitan University. Uh, he worked for senior management of multinational tech companies where he has been responsible for credibility assessment and negotiations. And as such, he is a professional behavioral analyst and trained in detecting deception. In his podcast, he puts these skills to work publicly, trying to show how not only humans, but even machines like ChatGPT can deceive us. He also already interviewed a string of very interesting people like Ambassador Chas, Fra Chas Freeman, Daniele Ganser, Avi Schleim, and even Noam Chomsky. Today we want to talk about his work and motivation for his channel. So Thomas, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Pascal. Uh, I was really looking forward to this conversation. Likewise, because you are an... I, I hesitate to to introduce you as a geopolitics YouTuber because I think what you're what you're focused on is more politics, like in general, and the way that that well maybe political system works, but how, how politicians work and who says what, right? Um, could you maybe explain to us a little bit the the background of your channel, what drove you to YouTube, and what what are you aiming at providing um, the general viewer uh, with? Yeah. There was actually no initial plan. It, 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 it kind of naturally developed. Yeah. As you said, I did my master's. Uh, I think I finished in 2021 and I discovered some discrepancies during my studies, as you so often do if you do this kind of uh, uh, research. I found that while most deception detection research and funding goes in nonverbal communication, we know that most deception actually are uh, acts of omissions, which is a linguistic trait, right? So after I finished my uh, my uh, master's, I started to interview also the world without exaggeration, right? The world leading subject matter experts in the field of the de deception detection. And they all told me the same thing. Nonverbal communication is not suited for deception detection, right? Which is why I focus on the linguistics, linguistic aspects of it. Yeah. Having done all of this, and you can find, I think, at least 20 interviews of those uh, subject matter experts on my on my channel, I kind of leaned towards my interest, which is since I'm 16 years old, what's going on in the world. Yeah, And there's a specific book. I still have it. I have the physical book behind me somewhere. It's called A Century of Oil Wars. I was between 16 and 18 when I read this book, and it was a real eye-opener. Yeah. So my interest started then. Yeah. So with the knowledge that I'm having now, I started to analyze, you know, uh, policymakers, politicians, business leaders, uh, that, that type of thing. Yeah. But again, I did this for my own curiosity because of my own interest. Yeah. And it grew out to a uh, YouTube channel, a modest one, yeah, not, not comparable to yours. Yeah. And it grew out to conversation that we are having like right now. You know, like... Uh, having a YouTube channel is a wonderful excuse to just write to famous people and tell them I would like to talk to you because they have questions and then they they are they, they, they become suddenly willing to actually talk yes. because they will be broadcasted, which is yes. like uh, basically what I what I started doing two years ago. Um, so I can only congratulate you on doing that. It's ac it's exactly the right way. There's only so and so much you think so and so many things you can learn from books. Only so and so timely, and the other the other things we learn in conversations. Um, I, I was really fascinated by one of your videos, and I will make a separate video on my channel with your video later um, showing that about ChatGPT. You managed to show that ChatGPT can 
I mean, you you are alleging that it intentionally can mislead uh, viewers or might intentionally mislead viewers when you ask it certain questions about political content. Could you, in a nutshell, break down what you learned, like talking to ChatGPT? Yeah. So first of all, I would compare ChatGPT as a kind of Wikipedia on steroids, right? Mm. So if you ask those systems, how far is the moon or, you know, how... How long does it take for a signal to go around the world? This kind of stuff, no problem at all. Yeah, but the moment you touch sensitive issues, then we are being. I said these systems are biased. There is no question. And I forgot his name now. When, when we talk about ChatGPT or OpenAI, the chief developer is uh, now. We are already going into into politics. Yeah, um, the the chief developer is a staunch supporter of Israel, right? And I used my knowledge about the Israel-Palestine conflict, in lack of a better term, to question ChatGPT on some on some historical facts which are lesser known, but which are available. Yeah. And as a behavior analyst, I led uh, ChatGPT down the truth funnel. We call this the truth funnel, where at the beginning ChatGPT said, "No, that never happened," and at the end, there was no way out for it to 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 um, to co- to agree, yes, it did happen. Yeah, and the video that you're mentioning, there are I think three or four different examples of that. Yeah, I have more. Yeah, I mean, but I, I made my point with that. So what I'm saying to people, if you use this type of systems, perfect, use it. Yeah, but your knowledge needs to be on a level that you spot mistakes or manipulation or deception, right? Because ChatGPT presents the information like that's the truth. That's that's absolutely it. it. It presents it with a with a confidence that kind of preempts you questioning the results. Because it it presents it also with a couple of facts mentioned, like A, B, C was the case. Therefore, D is also the case, but D doesn't necessarily follow from uh, from the first yeah. ones, right? And so yeah. there, there is this this authority to it, um, just like with Wikipedia, because you find a lot of a lot of uh, encyclopedic uh, uh, information on it that is actually true. You would believe that the rest is also true. Yeah. 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 Um, in your in your work and also in your interviews with with the people that you talk to, um, what is your finding about about manipulation um, as it's going on today in public speech? Yeah, let, let me give it. Let me give a little bit of a context. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough in my academic research. I had thirty senior executives of one of the largest global companies participating. Right. Mm-hmm. We, <clears throat> apologies. So I looked at deception as a linguistic deception indicators in high stakes business negotiations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the the findings were so sensitive that we have to that we had to embargo the actual transcripts you know what that means from from a university perspective yeah so and then i'm applying these kind of of findings to my analysis right and then you know again it's a gradual step you you start small and then I mean, my channel had like 200 subscribers when I interviewed Noam Chomsky the first time. I had the pleasure to talk talk to him twice. Yeah, and you know the information that you get then from these kind of people and my own findings they kind of match, right? And that that's interesting. That's inter- interesting to observe. Yeah, and then of course there is the temptation now to go further and fall further into this direction. You could call it rabbit hole. Yeah. But what's what's absolutely clear, and I can have I have very specific examples. Yeah, so people think they have full control about what they are saying, but that's not true. Yeah, I, I have it as a little self test on my on my website. It takes you a minute or so to realize you have way less control over what you're saying than than you think. Yeah, but that gives an opportunity. That gives the opportunity to actually analyze what people say already in the past yeah to give you a very concrete uh, example i interviewed a survivor of the 1967 israeli attack on the u.s warship uss liberty yeah in doing my research for that interview i found that uh, um, it was secretary of state robert mcnamara then that there's this controversy you know this ship the ship was attacked by israel for several hours and the sixth fleet was in the neighborhood and sent airplanes to help 
the USS Liberty, but they were recalled, right? I can tell you more about this, yeah. But then the question was, why were they, why were they, rec why were these airplanes, which were supposed to save American lives, recalled? And Robert McNamara, who was involved with uh, Lyndon Johnson, when he was asked repeatedly by reporters, why do you recall it? And that's coming now for, from the linguistic perspective. He didn't say, no, that's not true. I never did this, yeah. He said, now I try to get the exact words, something to the extent I've never heard about it. Yeah. So from a linguistic perspective, that's not only not answering the question, but it's a hedge. You know, it provides plausible deniability. I was not aware about this. Again, I don't have the exact words in my mind, but something in, in, in that respect. Yeah. So again, it's not a sign of deception per se. Yeah. It's what we call a, simply a red flag. Yeah. So that, that type of knowledge, historically, you can go back and analyze things that happened. Yeah. In, uh, <laughs> gifted politicians are naturally good at this kind of very quick thinking of how to phrase and or rephrase their sentences in order to achieve maximum impact in the audience and minimize the risk to themselves from the from the words that come from their mouths. And I've seen a couple of politicians, they seem to do this subconsciously because they're just extremely good at it. Um, but what about self-deception? Um, how many of the people that you analyzed do you think um, do this on purpose and how many of them do it like subconsciously just, just by virtue of being who they are? <laughs> now we go into the realms of cognitive biases, right? Now, before we discuss this, have a look at the Harvard University's implicit association tests. Because if you if you think you don't have any, uh, you don't fall victim to cognitive biases, be my guest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, apologies, I lost the, the train. No, I, I agreed. Like the my question is also about ourselves. You know, um, so that we that we all okay, have okay. biases is yeah. is pretty yeah. certain. But then yeah. um, I would argue that certain people are probably more aware mm. of biases and and pay attention to them, while others are probably less aware of them. And and you would still we still end up in in very biased conversations and and then narratives. Self reflection, yeah. Um, Deception, Trump. Trump is probably the most studied, shall we call him liar, on the planet. Yeah. No, there's a fact. There is there's research done because of his Twitter Twitter tweets, right? There are estimates he had like, I don't know, between 30 and 60,000 lies. Yeah. And then the question is, does, coming back to self-deception, yeah, does he actually believe them? That's the big question. Yeah. And there, there have been some linguistic studies done on that which shows that he doesn't believe them. He knows exactly what he is doing. Yeah. Um, the question that you just posed for deception detection is a very critical one, because if a person really believes what he or she is saying, then there are no indicators whatsoever. Yeah. What does we, what we, makes a person? I mean, we can go to the to the Israel Palestine conflict. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the pictures that we are seeing, I've said it before, Yeah. they go into the subconscious, whatever people, whatever kind of mental uh, exercises they have to execute in order to justify either for themselves or for others this absolute massive genocidal slaughter of kids women children yeah um they leave traces in your subconscious if you if you like it or not yeah it then creates cognitive dissonance with 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 all the effects of of that yeah this is you know this is a a big question that i've had for the past years and i just can't answer it do people who say absolute nonsense um believe in it like because we build entire war fair around it or the 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 justification for warfare the justification to not actually really have honest negotiations with vladimir putin about how to end the goddamn war in ukraine is that uh, you know, a whole string of untruths, which I believe are 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 utterly have been utterly disproven. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as you can pretend that he doesn't want to negotiate that that Russia has been in uh, has been invading Ukraine unprovoked, unprovoked. That, and so on. Yeah, unprovoked. Yeah. These all of all of these things. Yeah. But do the people believe it who are there? And is there a way to detect? Like, let's say Ursula von der Leyen. Do you have do you have a, a way to detect whether she says something that she believes in or whether she says an untruth that she yeah, knows have, is an untruth? 
I have actually something here from Ursula von der Leyen because it mm -hmm. it so it so demonstrates the the double standards. Yeah, I have here a couple of attacks here. Russian attacks against civilian infrastructure, especially electricity, are war crimes. Cutting off men, women, children of water, electricity, and heating with winter coming. These are acts of pure terror. This is of course related to Ukraine. Yeah, but when we then come on, on to uh, Israel, where where way way more of this is happening, uh, they are silent. Yeah. So there is this absolute double standard. But coming back to, to what you just uh, asked, yeah, I interviewed uh, Professor Nurit Pelet El Hanan, who is actually the sister of Miko Pelet, who I also interviewed, mm -hmm. and she started racism in Israeli school books. So my argument has been for a long time that the Israeli public, which is basically a militarized society, like almost everybody is in the military except for the Orthodox Jews, right? They are being fed Israeli propaganda from kindergarten. Yeah. So I completely understand. I mean, th th this goes, this goes, I mean, the sophistication of this manipulation is, is staggering. Yeah. It permits everything. So, yes, I completely, I do understand, not justify, I do understand why we have young kids. 18, 19, 20, going into Gaza, thinking they have to, they have to kill them all. I do understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these guys, they absolutely, when they're dancing, when they're actually having a party while they're pushing the button and they see, I, I don't know how many houses uh, being blown up. Yeah. I do understand the psychological mechanism that make that, that makes that possible. Yeah. And let's not forget one thing, the neocortex, yeah, develops till we are 23, 25. That means if you send 19 year old kids into a war, yeah, they're not, they don't have the mental capacity. I mean, <laughs> forgive me, yeah, but the, the, they virtually do not have the mental capacity yet to comprehend what they're actually doing. That comes later, often in the form of PTSD, right? Yeah. When they realize what they have done, right? Hey, that's why, so that's again, why. All that's why old men love sending young men and women into war because they're so easy. It's so easy because you tell them that the other one is evil yes. and then they go and try to kill them. Yes. It's really easy. Yes. Uh, it's not just because they're so agile and everything. Mm. Yeah. Dehumanization is the key. Yeah. We see this over and over and over. Um, the, the interesting thing is, of course, that the other side of the argument then usually tries to portray us as conspiracy theorists and mm -hmm. as people who try to deceive and, de and, and, and do deception, right? Um, you talk to one of Switzerland's most famous conspiracy theorists, Daniele Ganser. Daniele Ganser, yeah. in my view, is a quite brilliant academic, um, old, although I do, have not read his books on 9-11. I, I, I did. know he is most famous for those ones. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a very smart guy. And he fills, like, you know, halls of, with people of, like, 2,000 people and talks to them and, and, and gives, gives lectures. And for that, he's being criticized as, you know, being a... Being a uh, conspiracy uh, theorist. Conspiracy yeah. theorist and being evil and yeah. being able to manipulate people. What is your yeah. impression of Daniele Ganser? He's an academic. He's a brilliant mind. Yeah, I, mm. I cannot say it any other way. The the people who criticize him, they criticize him as a person. There, there's no mm. critic on his on the facts that he presents. Yeah. Just to give you one example, yeah, by the majority of the Americans. If you ask them, okay, 9-11, what happened? Uh, two planes, two buildings, was there something else? Oh, shit, actually, in, uh, Pentagon, yeah, also, yeah. But that a third building in New York collapsed at that day, which was not hit by an airplane, due to office fire is, is one thing, yeah. But, this, but that this building fell in free fall, symmetrically in his own footprint, I have, uh, whom did I interview, who said you would have to change the laws of the universe in order to make this happen. Why? If a building crashes, it cannot, there's no way. Ah, University of Alaska, they did a research, seven year old, uh, 77 year long research. Yeah. And, and, and they said it's a physical impossibility. A, f a building due to friction cannot collapse in free fall and not, I mean, not into it, not to mention the, it, in its own footprint. Yeah. So the Achilles heel of the 9-11 mainstream narrative 
is VTC7, World Trade Center 7. And anyone with a stopwatch, yeah, a student from any university with a stopwatch can calculate that this is not possible. There has to be something else involved. And he's... <laughs> I would really l l love to know what what the ho whole no, story behind answer, this I didn't thing is. I didn't no, you didn't. The question, but... but I think. <laughs> yeah. So, why why do you? I mean, what do you think about him, and what do you think about about um, about these charges, right, of trying to single out people as conspiracy theorists, which is like really really easy to do. Yeah, it is, and uh, I think the conspiracy theorist terminology came after the Kennedy assassination, yeah, where mm -hmm. the CIA tried to kind of manipulate the, you know, the sentiments uh, of the population. I think that's the first time when it came up. And if my information is co correct, then it came actually from the CIA, right? So it's it's a tactic. It's it's simple a tactic to to to, to silence critics, yeah. And to silence critics, again, Daniel Leganza lost his uh, job at the university. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Professor Nurit, which I already spoke about, same thing. Yeah. So it's not only it's not only you know some 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 weirdos um, uh, spreading true lies on, on on social media, but academics are being silenced. Yeah. Where the where the universities are not supposed to be, you know, this kind of free realm where you can explore any type of ideas. Yeah. No, nothing no, is further from the truth at the moment. Yeah. No, that 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 is over. Um, I will publish no. tomorrow, and by the time this will go online, it will have been in the past in the German channel an interview with Ulrike Gero, which is one of Germany's leading academics in political mm. uh, science and also very vocal. And she has been uh, kicked out from her university because uh, of plagiarism charges, which are, um, in my mm. view, utterly bogus. But um, academics who who do speak out, they they are being they do lose their job. So and we are in that kind of environment, and deception is is key, or understanding deception mechanisms is key for the population to judge whether they can trust the source or not. Which is why I think it is so important that this that this research and also this the knowledge about this goes out. Because at the end of the day, we read so much propaganda by now in the West, so much that really the only the only thing we can trust is our is ourselves and our filters. So we need to sharpen the filters. What would you recommend? How to sharpen our filter for what is deception and what is honest, or what what are honest lies and what are honest truths? It's a tricky one, you know. We are living in a society which is in decay. Yeah, that, that's my absolute uh, uh, observation. That means people have other problems. You know, they are afraid they lose their jobs, they, the, the mortgage, the second or third mortgage. Uh, they have kids, uh, school. Well, the, you know, all, all these kind of things that are happening at the, in the background are not contributing to an environment where people have the time and the energy. Yeah, to spend time on that. Yeah, you you. There is no, you know, easy answer to that. You need to immerse yourself. You need to educate yourself. That's your only chance. Yeah. Um, we are not even talking about AI now, right? So the AI gets more and more sophisticated. Yeah. It's not only what we read. Yeah. This is way more subtle than that. I just talked about school books. Yeah. Any movie that you see coming from America, probably also, let's say, India or whatever, yeah, they are subtle. I mean, Top Gun was <laughs> was a recruiting mechanism for the U.S. Army, yeah, that type of thing, yeah. So it goes it goes everywhere. It's it's in anything you see, yeah, subtle or not so subtle, we are manipulated left and right. Yeah, but when you read news and you watch the news how do you judge whether or not you want to believe this or that person or whether you want to buy into this or that story by default i do not believe unless i have evidence yeah mm -hmm. so i have uh, to, to make it a bit more specific yeah? i have two key areas of expertise outside of, of behavior analysis. Yeah? One is the conflict in the Middle East and the other one is the geopolitical situation concerning, let's say, the proxy war be between the US and Russia. Yeah? As, as a European, I cannot understand why European politicians sacrifice Europe, virtually sacrifice Europe on the altar of US hegemony. I do not understand. Well, I do. <laughs> but on, 
yeah, there's a discrepancy. It makes no I, sense. I, it's a stupid. It's a stupid thing to yeah. do. We can understand yeah. that. We we can explain the mechanisms behind it, but it's still an extremely dumb yeah. thing to do, and it makes it yeah. hard to swallow. Yeah. <laughs> so with that knowledge that I already have, and this is exactly the same uh, principle that 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 I uh, applied with the ChatGPT. Yeah, I question and requestion and and, and requestion, but it's all based on knowledge that I already have. I'm in the position because I'm reading since I'm 16 years old, that mm. type of, of literature, right? So by default, I'm highly, highly, highly critical, especially what comes from the mainstream media. Yeah, there is, no, there is a difference between, let's say, the media in Russia and the media in the West. And when I say the West, it's this little part where we think it's the whole world. Yeah, um, America, Europe, Japan, you know, those 16% of the world population, which we think that's the whole world. Yeah. So what comes out of this media bubble, you, you need to be highly, highly, highly uh, critical. Yeah? So in Russia, the people know, you know, this is propaganda. But here in the West, we don't know. We assume this is objective truth. But we disregard the fact that all those three or four large media companies that, that remain yeah, behind the screens, feeding all the other media organizations with the information, they're privately owned by interest groups whose interests are they are they promoting well not yours and not mine that's for sure yeah so critical yeah which is why which is why uh, you know for all my criticism of western propaganda i must i must say they are absolutely fantastic you know they're really mm -hmm. good at propaganda mm -hmm. propaganda that nobody believes is bad propaganda propaganda that everybody believes is like you know they do a really good job at it <laughs> so <laughs> that's exactly what i that's sorry that's exactly what i say to my friends i was just in amman i, I interviewed a survivor of the 1948 uh, massacre israeli massacre of the village of tantura and I was there and I said to them, you know, those, those two key slogans from the Israeli army, the, uh, Israel's army is the most moral army in the world and a land without people for a people without land. I said, these are brilliant slogans. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Because they, they work. were believed mm -hmm. because they work over generations. They work brilliant slogans. So in that, in that respect, yeah. But again, coming back to what you already said at the beginning, as a behavioral analyst, I can only confirm we are extremely easily manipulated. And um, Harari Nuval calls it even uh, the humans are being hacked. And I believe he's very close to the truth. Do you have, do you have an, uh, a tip or a, an, a recommendation of how to check whether or not um, you yourself or we have been have been misled i mean uh, because the point is like when you when you make a mistake or when we believe something we by default we would assume that this is right right otherwise we wouldn't believe it so do you have a, do you have a critical mind check that you can that, that you can recommend how people can 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 check their own beliefs yes so then uh, coming back to the to the implicit association tests that i already mentioned as a starting point so the first thing that you have to realize is hey and me speak me really speaking right now i'm mm -hmm. conscious that despite me knowing all of that i'm still prone to fall victim to cognitive biases right mm. so i invite every one of your viewers go to the harvard uh, university's website just type in harvard and implicit association tests you will get i think they have 20 different uh, examples in different areas yeah are you racism are you a racist are you a homophobic are you uh, whatever you, you can see yeah but it's just to show you on an objective way. There is no way of cheating. And you can repeat those tests. You can repeat those tests, even that you know you, you, there's no way of cheating. Yeah. So that the first is the realization that we humans are, we have modern skulls, but we have ancient minds. And this is now where we go into evolutionary psychology, one of my favorite topics. Yeah. Because in my point of view, the only credible way to explain human behavior is through evolutionary psychology yeah so we say so most main, mainstream academics say evolution also darwin was correct till here but the brain is an exception yeah um i i agree with a number of really interesting evolutionary psychologists who say no 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 any mechanism in our brain is there because it served an evolutionary purpose 
Yeah, and this is why they are so strong. Yeah, I could tell you, I could give you a, a couple of examples. For example, the halo effect, it's called. Yeah, so we assume if a person is very good in that area, we automatically assume, hey, this person is also very good in this and this and this and this area. Yeah, the hey, same halo, halo effect, like halo effect, the radiating, true, radiating on everything. Mm. Yes, the same is true. It's also halo effect. If leaders have strong jaw lines, male leaders have often strong jaw lines and, that, and a bit taller. Why in evolutionary, in evolutionary perspective, strong jaw lines indicate high level of testosterone. Testosterone indicates a certain type of aggressiveness, which indicates uh, potential success. Yeah? So if you look at it in, in that way, physically, but also psychologically, it explains a lot. Interesting. That's why uh, that's why the Serbs love Vucic so much. The guy is huge. <laughs> 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 that then doesn't indicate whether or not he's being loved outside uh, mm -hmm. outside as well. But um, yeah. another one, if if I may, just just one last example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, availability bias, extremely extremely strong means information that you have readily available because it's repeated again and again and again and again, like. Palestinian terrorists, Palestinian terrorists, mm. Palestinian terrorists. Yeah, it filters, it filters the information that comes in. And if I say filter, it's not just a minor tweak. It can physically, no, it can virtually change how you see the world. We can make the impression that the car has bigger or smaller depending on the words I choose to describe the crash. Yeah, mm. so it's not just a little bit. Yeah, words are incredibly, incredibly powerful. The framing, every every PR agency can tell you. By the way, I have an interview with uh, Gesa Liska. She is the CEO of a German uh, PR company who is exclusively focusing on using uh, evolutionary psychology to guide consumer behavior. I invite everybody to watch it because you learn a thing or two about human behavior. We, we, you know, this is what's so scary um, and where I as an international relations scholar try to understand whether or not we humans are actually in charge of nation states mm -hmm. or whether these larger structures that we have above us, whether they move independently of us in the sense that, you know, you and I, we are, we are lumps of cells. But you and I are not a cell. We don't act like a cell. We act like more, right? We, we have emergent properties. And these psychological factors would then indicate that they're, that as groups, as large groups, these large groups act independent and differently from, from, from each in, uh, individual. And even though we would like to see that Joe Biden, you know, is the captain in, on the, on the ship of the United States or well, whoever, whoever, uh, whoever is in his brain at the yeah. moment or Vladimir yeah. Putin or Xi Jinping. But the, the fact is that probably we moved and independently because all of these factors play, um, play into creating group behavior. Um, do you have any conclusions about about this, about not just the individual, but the larger um, group group behaviors? Yeah, group behaviors are extremely important. And how shall I say this? I had a, I had experience um, a while ago. I was at a at an Arab funeral, and the body was barred, how shall I say, presented in, in the home and then taken away. Yeah. And there were maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred people. I don't, I do not know, but as an outsider, yeah, but I was, but I hardly knew the, the people. Yeah. There was an accident by, by chance. I knew some, yeah. But what, what, what struck me was, is that I somehow picked up their feeling, their grief. Yeah. It took, it took a moment or two for me to realize this and to kind of, yeah. So group behavior is extremely contagious. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I compare, for example, organism, so, so organizations like large companies or mm -hmm. states, for me, they're organisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The organisms, they have a different goal than the individuals. Yeah? Yeah. And again, I could, I could be very, very specific here. Yeah? I have talked to senior executives who have to execute certain policies, whilst privately, they have a totally different point of view. Right. Yeah. So there is an absolute gap between the individual, doesn't matter in, in, in which function and in, in which position, and the organism as a whole, which makes me a bit concerned because on a state level, 
there are two things. First of all, the organization of the state is, again, a different one than the in individual. Yeah? But on the individual level, and I, in, uh, I watched with great interest the meeting that Obama had with Putin in Moscow. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know the year anymore. Yeah? But the, the behavior display... Okay, maybe I should make one, one thing clear. I said that nonverbal communication is unsuitable, and that's not what I'm saying. That's a whole range of, 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 of academics say nonverbal communication is unsuitable for deception detection. Yeah. But nonverbal communication is absolutely valuable again when we view it through the filter of evolutionary psychology. Right. So the behavior that be between uh, Obama and Putin was extremely telling. Right. This antagonism. Yeah. I could see that. Whilst being in Russia, Obama was the go was the guest. He took charge, and Putin was pissed. And this is in every little detail, in every move, in every move you can you can see that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, we think our leaders, even a, a highly appraised leader a leader like Obama, more than brain ancient, sorry, modern skull, ancient brain. There are those, those, uh, those mechanisms in place that take over to a certain extent. Yeah. And the only mechanism to escape, even those, even on the, on that level is self reflection, but who does it? Yeah. And I have not even begun to explain what I mean with the self, self reflection or consciousness. Because we all assume we are conscious all the time. And I'm saying, as a lucid dreamer, I can tell you, we can be conscious. It takes conscious effort and energy, but we are certainly, certainly not conscious all the time. Yeah. Um, where will you where will you take this? I mean, where will you take your channel and your your analysis? Um, what's what's what what's your goal um, of what would you like to show from here on? That's a good question for which I have no answer. Yeah, let's just say I was fortunate enough to had having had the opportunity to, to talk to some really exceptional people. Yeah, and most of all of them basically are people they are not voicing their opinion. They have a proven track record in some respect. Yeah, and there's actually I, I want actually to, to give you credit for something. Yeah, so there are a lot of those YouTubers out there. And I don't even like the word YouTuber. I don't see myself as a YouTuber. Yeah. I talk to interesting people and I hope that other people find it also interesting. My, my channel is not monetized. There's no, there should not be commercials in. Yeah. So this is totally, you know, outside of any kind of, 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 uh, ulterior motives. Yeah. Where I want to go with this is to continue on, on that path in the hope that some people watch it and start to think, start to wake up. Why? And it, it's a tricky one because doomsday scenarios are, you know, they don't sell very well. Yeah. But you and I, we have one thing in common. We do not pretend to be neutral. Yeah. And <laughs> my channel is literally called neutrality studies. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you're not. Yeah. And no. I, this, this is a good thing. Yeah. So, because there are some big names out there and I don't need to, to, to mention any, they are, they're so-called neutral, but I'm, I'm, I'm listening for 30 seconds and I, I can hear and I can, I can outline exactly why, why, for example, what I don't know, Piss Morgan or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's all about numbers. I mean, these guys are journalists that they, they need, you know, uh, clicks and, and whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's influencing public opinion in a negative way. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Yeah, and I, I think if you are the most honest thing to do is to 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 show your political leanings, to be to be open about that, and also your own biases, and then let 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 the let the viewer judge instead of pretending to be neutral. And the study of neutrality is not the same as being neutral, not at all. I am a lefty, and I will I will try to live up to that and people need to know that so that my friends on the right side of the spectrum are able to put my my comments into the appropriate category right and then file it off and and make sense of it um the 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 other thing is that i do think that you and i who do these kind this kind of work because we got sucked in from other places that we can add something and maybe 
one of the things I would like to do or that I'm trying to do and which is also why I monetize the channel is that we need to figure out ways to make peace work profitable. One of the biggest biggest disfavors that uh, Mother Teresa did to us is to make it seem as if though peace work has to consume the self you know you have to be poor and you have to be you have to be a saint to do real peace work and that sucks because that just helps the military industrial complex because it is absolutely accepted that you can make millions or billions of dollars with selling weapons but selling peace or peaceful inter intercourse between states well then you're supposed to be poor and so on and we need to figure out ways of making peace work uh profitable we need to figure out ways of uh, decoding um propaganda and uh, and to tame these beasts these these international corporations and organizations and we can probably not do it in our lifetimes but we need to add to the to these voices and maybe that's where where um independent journalism and research comes in and public public doing this publicly right with others who can listen and then and then uh, do their own research and, and carry it forward i don't know if you agree with that or not I think um, Daniele Ganser is a good example. Yeah, they kicked him out of his uh, out from from the university. Now he does those speeches. He has a I think a, a, a piece. Um, how is it? Organization called a, a peace for uh, a peace forum or something. He he, he set up a, yeah. a whole uh, organization a, a, around peace. Yeah. Now the challenge with that is, uh, so first of all, not not many people will be in a position like uh, like Daniele yeah. Ganser. And then secondly, again, <laughs> cognitive biases. You can. So facts don't change minds. Yeah, emotions do. Yeah. yeah. So you know it's 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 very hard. So there's this double-sided sword of of, of uh, social media. Yeah, because you will be in a bubble. Yeah, in your case and in my case, I'm, I would assume it's a positive bubble, right? But it's a bubble nevertheless, and we have people in here who kind of same. They confirm their own beliefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to reach out to people. We need to find a way to reach out to people who are not already in in our bubble. Yeah, and a very and then a very quick one from a behavior analyst's perspective. Yeah, we have three brains: brainstem, limbic system, and neocortex. Yeah, what what I see most people making the mistake they 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 argue and transmit information via facts. Neocortex: facts, 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 facts. What they have to do is they have to address all three brains in a sequence. First, neocortex, something new, something unexpected. Then, limbic system, the emotion. And then you go with the facts. And for every single um, point that you will have, that you want to make, you have to follow this sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, from an evolutionary psychology perspective, that would be the way to go. Yeah. But I tried it so now and then. Yeah. It's time consuming. It's it's you need to be really on top of your game. Yeah. So if I would have a TEDx uh, presentation or something, this is where I would apply it. In some business negotiations, you can apply this kind of things. Yeah. Um, but again, you need to be on the on on the top of your game. Yeah. This is not something you can switch on all the time. Yeah. So coming back to your question, what could we do? We need to reach people who are in a different bubble, let's say, mm. yeah, they have different types of beliefs. And then again, you cannot address them with facts alone. Yeah, you have to, you have to go with the sequence that, that I already mentioned. Do you appreciate humor and sarcasm as a way of transmitting uh, contrarian information? I can see that with Jimmy Dore, for instance, he is mm. very good at, at scratching people's belief systems um, through creating um you know through humor and sarcasm and then a lot of people switch off but other people like it you know this might be a way of hooking hooking people into another point of view it depends how you how you reach out right mm. you, you need to make sure that you're not reaching out to your own bubble yeah so who would buy a ticket for a show yeah true for example yeah so i'm, I'm not an expert on on humor and, and sarcasm in in that sense yeah i'm i'm sure it has its value but I'm not sure if it reaches out to the to the group. So you have your own group, you have the opposite group, and you have a much last much mass in between. Yeah, I'm always I always say, look for every for every type of communication, don't focus on your opponents. Waste of time. 
you don't need to focus on your, let's say, followers, but focus on this large mass in between those undecided. Mm -hmm. This is where you have the most gain. True. Yeah. True. Um, Thomas Karat, host of the Salt Cube Analytics. Um, everybody will find uh, some of his uh, brilliant interviews on on this network as well in the in the very near future. We will um, collaborate on this also on our different language channels. Thomas, I would like to thank you very much. I'm the one thanking you. It was my pleasure.